Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode here on this channel. Uh, today, I would like to talk about with you about uh, yeah something very interesting because I got uh, the opportunity to do something completely different to my usual workflow. I was getting invited to the Moby Dictum conference 2023 in Turkey by Code Magic, and uh, thanks for that once more. But what I can say is. I had the opportunity to work in Unity and implement something very spicy. The idea is that we put Lua files, this is a scripting language, we will see that in a second, but there are fantastic videos and tutorials out there how these are exactly working, where you can create full scripts and everything, and we inject that into our builds that we have already created with Unity. For that, I brought a little Steam Deck, and as you can see, we have improvised a little bit because our internet connection here on the conference was not good enough for a live stream. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so before we jump into all the different things that we want to uh, yeah, discover, let's start with the basics. Um, we will need Lua. Lua script is a fantastic scripting language that is very easy to learn because it has only a few keywords. And Lua has really the opportunity to create full scripts, functions, it understands classes. And because it is so close to the C interpreter, we can use it in Unity very easily because there we are using C Sharp. And there is a plugin called Moon Sharp. And Moon Sharp has the opportunity to directly plug these scripts in our source code. That's pretty cool. But before we now drive crazy, we should never execute scripts that we have lie around on a server inside of our build applications. To make sure that we are not executing any script that is not ours, we will have to create a public and private key, and we will have to sign our files that we have created and modified with this private key. For that, we will use code magic to create a CI-CD pipeline to manage the um, encryption and the signature of the file with our private key and then we verify it against our public key and that we will do on our unity side inside of the build bundle so we download at the end the file of the lua script from the server we will download the signature that we also will put on the server and after that we will verify inside of our build if that script is valid all right but now let's have a quick look on to our scene. So we created a little game here, as you can see. And in this game, we are just a little car that can drive around. And yeah, it is not too complicated. And if we crash in one, two of these cones, we are crashed, game over, and we have to restart the game. Obviously, we can select the car to make it more beautiful. And as you can see already, the scene has changed. So this is the final product at the end. We will be able to configure, for example, the day-night cycle, the weather, and also these cones where they will spawn from this script on Firebase. And just to make sure that uh, I explain it everything well and I don't cheat, I would like to show you here on the Steam Deck the game. So it is already running and it is built completely. So we, that means we will not change anything of the source code in C Sharp in background. So everything that you see here will be staying the same. Obviously this can tell everyone, so I encourage you to test it out yourself. Down in the video description you will find the link to the repository where you get the game of Unity, you get the signature parts, and you get the information on how to create the CI CD pipeline yourself. And uh, while I am at it and playing some of these games here, it is the perfect time to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you! All right, so let's have a quick look into our project. Actually, our project consists of two parts. So whenever you go to GitHub, the repository down there, it will consist out of two parts. The first one is the main folder where you can start the Unity project into it. It will look like this. So you have all the scripts. We can see here the assets. It's very small, but you get the drift. There is all the assets like uh, materials, plugins, prefabs, and things like that. And don't forget, you need to get uh, Git LFS to download all the things. So uh, there is a large file storage behind of it. I will send also a link down in the video description. And inside of these assets, we have, for example, our scripts. So there you find all kinds of scripts that I created, like obstacle controllers, if you crash to something, like a um, weather controller that changes the weather dynamically, or the world light controller. But what we are interested in is the load Lua script, because this one will take care that we make a net request. And as you can see already, VS Code is starting up. Um, so it will make a web request um, to our server. 
get all the scripts that it needs, and at the end, will download the scripts from the server. I created also a possibility to do it locally, so that's why you see here localhost. And from there, you have the possibility to send web requests to the different posts. You get the script from the server. And with that, you have directly the access to get the public key, verify everything. And at the end, you verify it, as I said, with the public key against the signature from the server and check if the script is correctly from that part. So now I mentioned there are two parts of the script. Well, how do you get a public key and a private key? That's not too easy, right? So I prepared a little Dart script here inside of our tool sign-in folder inside of the same repository. Inside of here, you see already we have a Firebase RC. This is just to manage the hosting where we want to host everything. So I used for that Firebase. You can just set up your own project here and set up where it should be um, yeah, added. So you need to log in there. And on the other hand, you have the Obstacles Lua, which is the file that really controls at the end. Um, yeah, it's the injected script at the end. As you see, it is very basic. We have just three functions here inside. And each of these functions, it's calling like uh, do obstacles, creates obstacles. And for that, we have the MK obstacle function that we defined in C Sharp. And what we are doing from our Lua script is we call back C Sharp and calling these functions that will create something else. We will have a look into that in a second. Then we have the weather, who is doing the same thing with MK weather, and MK day night, which does the same thing. The cool thing is now that this script can be updated and uploaded to the Firebase, and it will change our game at the end. And we will see that in a second. But what I also want to show is inside of our load Lua script, how we can execute it with Moonsharp. First of all, we create this Lua script here. Oh, sorry. Something like that. So the Lua script, it's just a new object, a Lua script. And inside of here, we have now globals. In Lua, everything is a table, like arrays, all these lists, maps, and so on are tables. And functions are collected inside of these tables. So what we are doing is we go to the global table, we define a new function name, like MK obstacle, and inside of here, we define the C sharp code that we have in behind. And if we jump inside of here, we can see directly that we really execute this function in background. So the function in C Sharp is already prepared and the Lua script is just calling this function. So that makes it, for example, useful if you would like to create the whole thing for like events, Christmas event. So now you have a timer on your server and say you change the parameters as soon as uh, the Christmas event starts. This allows you to really inject the code whenever you need it. So now you have that. We did that with MK Obstacle, MK Weather, and MK Day Night. So we define these methods in a different name than we have it in C Sharp. And as you see in MK Weather, we just have this start weather function that has a debugger in it. We don't need that. But with X, X1, X2, it depends on we deactivate the weather, we let it start snowing, or we let it start raining. So with that, we have started our different weather parts. And down here, we get the functions that we want to call in Lua. So that means instead of getting it from Lua to C Sharp, we're going from C Sharp to Lua. And instead, uh, we pass in the Lua globals here, do obstacle, to weather, do day, night. And then at the end, we call the methods one by another. That's actually it. And as you can see, everything is combined inside of this verified part. Because what we are doing, we verify the script with the public key. So, how is that going? It is rather complicated, so let us take that step by step. So, to do it, verify script with signature and public key. How does that work? Well, first of all, we have to use this public key factory where we get the public key string. And this is just the string that we defined and we put that as an, the public key as an asset in our Unity project. So if we check it out here, we can find this text assets. And inside of these text assets, we find the public key that is defined and that we want to use. And the idea is now that we read this public key file and with that, we can define everything we need. All right, what does that mean? So we have now the script bytes where we get the script, we convert it to um, UTF-8 and get it as bytes in this case. We get the signature bytes and at the end, we just define how we want to sign it. We do that in SHA-265 and with RSA. 
And then we initialize everything, we make a block update, and then we verify the signature from the public key with the signature and make a match. And we know now that this file is really created by us and signed by us. And with that, we can be sure to execute this code because never trust any code that is not yours. As you probably know, this video is sponsored and supported by Code Magic. They invited me to be here at the Mobidictum conference on 2023 uh, in Turkey, where I had the chance to play around with the Steam Deck, playing games, creating Unity stuff. And that is because they have created a new CI CD possibility for Unity. So it is possible to go from your Unity project if you have everything ready bundle it on a VM, create it, and yeah, ship it to all the different platforms like Android, iOS, and Steam nowadays. That is a quite huge success, and I really, really would like to ask you to check out the link down in the video description and check out Code Magic again if you haven't yet. Okay, in our Dart project, to generate the Dart uh, the keys, I created a little Dart project here. One of these files are called Generate Keys, and we use a package called Krypton for that. What Krypton does is it creates an RSA key pair for us, creates the private key file, the public key file, and it is really as easy as going to the terminal, say clear, make it a little bit bigger, uh, yeah. so, and we go to tools, sign, and inside of here what we can do is now execute start, bin, and here inside generate keys. And thanks to our nice little script that we have here, we get automatically two files inside where we have created it, that is a private key and a public key. And that's already the whole magic that we will need to make sure that our script is working in the CI-CD pipeline. And that is probably the last bit, Code Magic CI-CD. We created a YAML file for that, and there are also some very interesting points that I would like to show you. First of all, we know uh, we trigger everything by build, also previous build, so whenever we push something on main, we make sure that we uh, automatically trigger that build. And all we are doing inside is we create some scripts. One of them is that we want to sign the scripts, okay, so we get all the packages that we need for Dart. Then we execute Dart bin sign Dart, that is exactly what we did before. Um, so there is a second script inside of our project that creates this sign-in file. And if we do that with the optical uh, email, then we create a folder where we have our builds inside, and then we copy the file inside, and at the end we copy also the signature. And last but not least, we deploy it to Firebase. Firebase knows exactly the build web folder, so we don't have to care at all about where the files reside. We can be sure that the files are dropped on Firebase. So this is how it works actually, and we have set up our Firebase token. You would have to replace the Firebase token in CI for yourself to make that right, and the private key needs to go also to CI CD on Code Magic. So let's have a look how this is done. So what you will do is you go to CodeMagic.io, enter your project, and there you will find the environment variables. Here you can set up the best environment variables. I did that now for my project, and I didn't want to destroy everything. But what you will do is you enter the different variables that you would like. In our case, for example, private sign key one, and then you give the variable name here, uh, value. Here you enter the private key that you have created. My case is you. I go to the files. Going down here to the private key, copy that over, drop that here inside. Make sure that the queue is selected. With that, you encrypt everything nice, and select one of the groups. The groups is just to make the CI CD pipeline aware of these variables and what it should take this to. I just created one for sign. You could do that with, I don't know, development, something, something like that. You create this group and then at the end press add. This enables you now to re use that inside of the code How is that done? If we switch now back again to code magic YAML file, you can see up here that we have these different groups. These groups are exactly the name that you have defined. So in our case, it would be this name here, development signing, and you would have to add it here, this is development, And now you have access to that uh, to the variable by giving it a dollar sign and adding the variable name that you have. With that, you have no problem at all to access this file. 
great the stuff. And this you do also with your Firebase token, and you are ready to go to enable your application on Firebase. Cool. So, as I said already, we have set up our CIC, and if we take a look at how the builds are looking, we can jump right away into the executed code. And here you see our full pipeline. So we can have all this machine learning we can do about this is what the magic is for us. We fetch the app source. We use the SDK. In this case, this is Android. So we call the SDK. This is Flutter and Dart. Afterwards, we get the packages that we need for signing because it's a Dart project. The more we get inside our script, this is the script file that we have executed. Can we have some of those? We can have dark, we can have t shirts, anything. Um, actually, our Estonian guy got this, so he told me, but I forgot what it was. All right, but now that we know how the pipeline is working, we know how to sign everything. How is going for it? On the C sharp part, we have already explored how we sign everything and verify it. So now let's have a look how it actually turns out. So we go to our Visual Studio Code, we head over and change inside of our game script the obstacle rule. So for example, we would like to have all obstacle removed, we would like to have it snowing, and inside of the night, I would like to have the day. So that means we have now no obstacles, we have the weather that is snowing, and at the end we let it rain. So for that purpose, we go in our terminal again. And in our terminal, what we are doing is we just commit the things to kick. So let's say it status, we check what is there new. I don't want to add anything new like public private key, we don't necessarily need that. What we are interested in is the game script blue one. So hit add uh, game scripts and obstacle. Now that we have that, we would like to um, yeah push the whole thing. So commit message let it uh, snow on the time. Check and you say git push. Now that we do that in our kernel, it will push it up to GitHub. And I didn't have an automatic trigger yet, so we will have to trigger the build pipeline ourselves. But that is not a big issue. So let's wait till the push is done. Finally, we build new. Voila. And it will take now around one minute to run the whole CI CD. But at the end, what we will have probably, or what we have for sure, is in our Firebase console. Let's quickly search for the Firebase project. Go to console, let's see. Go to hosting, and we get some nice little domains here. And if we change here and we go to obstacles, the Lua, what we can see is at the moment we have all obstacles activated. We have the weather that is uh, rainy in this case, and we have it night. And because we change that now, we can reload here. Now, our CIC has been done, we see we have commented out all the obstacles and we can see that the weather is not changed and the night effect. So, and as I said, I don't make any cuts right now, just to make sure that I'm also saying the truth. We see it on the Steam Deck, I press play, and I don't know how easy it is visible, but we can see the only obstacle that is left is this one, and the obstacle, all the others are gone. That is because this obstacle is actually from um, bop, bop, bop. It is inside of Unity C Sharp and I forgot to remove it. But as you can see, it snows and we are able to play. Fantastic! So, if you enjoyed this episode where I played with Steam Deck, Unity, Code Magic, and all the other cool things that I love so much, check out our next videos. I really hope you liked that video. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Check out all the next videos that you will see here where I'm talking more about CI CD and how to implement it into your Flutter projects.